If you lean forwards in your squat or feel like your lower back fatigues well before your legs do and you're doing a barbell squat, you've probably been told it's an issue with your mobility, strength or some sort of muscular imbalance. The factor that often gets overlooked is the most important one, which is body structure. If you look at Katrina and I, we are roughly the same height, yet we have different leg lengths, and specifically the upper thigh bone, or the femur. This isn't an unusual thing, as all humans have different relative structures, which is something that we can't change. Sherelle also has a longer femur than me, but hers isn't quite as long as Katrina's. If you're unsure on where you fall in this relative spectrum, try jumping into a leg press and lower it down to the bottom. You'll see a significant difference here between the three of us, which is mainly to do with our leg length. Now, what what does this really mean for your squats? We can all do barbell back squats, but they're going to look very different and they're all going to naturally bias different regions. When you have a relatively short torso and longer femurs like Katrina does, you'll have to fold forwards more in order to keep that bar staying roughly over the midfoot throughout the entire squat motion, which is the most efficient position to be in. If Katrina wants to stay more upright, the weight of the bar will be pulled too far behind her midfoot and she'll topple over backwards. And by contrast, if I did too much of a forward lean with my structure, I'll topple over forwards from the weight of the bar, which is why my natural tendency is to stay a lot more upright. When it comes to lifting, everything is about leverages and what regions and muscles are in the best relative positions to receive the force of the external object that we're lifting. In Katrina's case, since she's leaning forwards more, there are going to be more forces going through her lower back and hip extensors, and she gets pulled more into hip flexion. So naturally, she tends to feel more fatigue in her lower back. Technically, she could also feel some more through her glutes as well, as they're in a more powerful position to be working. But when it comes to true fatigue, the lower back tends to fatigue a lot faster than the glutes do, due to the relative strength between the two regions. The other thing is that her squat is a lot less knee bendy than mine, so she won't be taking her quads through their full range of motion and truly taxing them. For me, with my longer torso and shorter femur, I'm able to maintain a more upright torso position and reach full depth easily without getting as much strain through my lower back. I'll still get some, and I'll still get fatigued there eventually, but it's typically a lot more balanced between my legs and my back muscles, whereas for Katrina, it's a lot more back. Everybody is different, as it's not just about the mechanics and the structures that play here, but we're also dealing with your own muscle strengths, mobility, and perceptions of fatigue, pain, and soreness. But it's not uncommon to find people with longer femurs tend to have a similar complaint of feeling their lower back fatiguing earlier, and their squat folding forwards a whole lot more. There's a few options we can look at here to address this. First is mobility. The more that your ankles are able to dorsiflex or get your knees over your toes, the more you'll be able to keep upright whilst keeping the bar over the midfoot. Mobility is a slow thing to address, and for some people, like Katrina, it's something where she may get little benefit from it, as she really does have quite good ankle mobility. The next option is to look at using a heel elevation. Using a heel elevation isn't cheating for a lack of mobility. It artificially creates more length to your tibia, which makes your femur relatively shorter from a mechanical standpoint. This is why everyone who uses a heel elevation is able to squat deeper. If you're looking at getting as much as you can out of your quads, I highly recommend using a heel elevation all the time. Even if you have my structure of a longer torso and shorter femur, it'll still allow you to focus on getting more of a stretch in the quads and using your knees more as opposed to your hips when squatting. The final option is to change the position of the load. If we go from a back squat to a front squat, this places the weight more in front of the body, which allows you to stay more upright. Safety bar squats emulate this as well, which is why they're a decent option to be using, although not everybody will have this available to them. If you have a hard time getting comfortable on front squats, try the zombie squat as a starting progression. This teaches you how to position the bar high on your collarbone instead of having it resting on your wrists, fingers or hands. It also cues a high chest position and a more upright torso, which is another common fault in the front squat. Try using it as a warm up to learn the correct bar placement, then you can grip the bar however you like for extra stability as you lift more weight in a front squat. You can use crossed arms, a clean grip or even lifting straps to hold that barbell in place. For the purposes of muscle building and strength through the lower body, there isn't much of a difference between them all. Use whichever variation you prefer. The big takeaway here is to respect your body and structure. Don't force yourself into exercises that may not be the best choice for you and your goals. Just about everybody can and should perform a squat pattern, but outside of the obvious barbell athletes, there's no need for it to be a barbell back squat. There's plenty of reasons why the back positioning may not be the best choice for you, and it's not a cop-out to be opting for other variations like a front squat. You can build strength, mobility, and muscle mass using a variety of squat patterns, so choose whichever you prefer and push hard on it. 
All right, that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any other questions or comments at all, please do drop them down below. <sighs> I think that's it. All right, see you all next time.